Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, May 20th, 2024. Let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to comment on is I'm getting a lot of pushback on my uh, support of the Palestinians in their fight against the Israelis. And when I say that, I, I certainly don't you know, condone what happened on October the 7th. But I don't condone what the Israelis have done afterwards. And uh, so I wanted you just right, right away at the beginning of the video here, this is George Galloway expressing my sentiments. And, and one of the things he points out, I want you to, when you watch this clip, is that the rate at which children are dying in Gaza far surpasses what the Nazi Germany did to the Jewish children uh, during the uh, genocide that took place uh, uh, when they killed six million Jews. So I'm not saying they've killed more kids than, than the Jews that died in World War II. I'm just saying the rate at which they are dying uh, is, is astounding. And uh, he does have some uh, comments on uh, Ukraine. I mean, you do understand that Zelensky's term, uh, so, I mean, Ukraine is, is not a Democrat nation. <laughs> not even going to have elections. Zelensky's term is up, I think, on the 28th. Of May, and uh, so he's the, he's declared martial law. He's he's the supreme commander. He's the totalitarian dictator of Ukraine, and of course we're paying for it. Uh, and uh, anyway, let's watch that clip from George Galloway. It's not surprising that the great majority of respondents think we should stop paying for Ukraine's wars because Ukraine's war is lost, lost in exactly the way predicted when it began by the mother of all talk shows and by sundry other commentators who knew the balance of force in this war, who knew the limitations of little Grant Shapps and little Rishi Sunak and little Emmanuel Macron and little soldier Schultz. We knew that these were little men of little stature and with little political strength in their own countries. We knew that they were not going to enter a war against hypersonically weaponized nuclear superpower Russian Federation, backed as it is to the hilt by the People's Republic of China. We can do maths in a way which our leader writers, our teenage scribblers on the front pages, and our little men in charge of our national affairs clearly cannot. So, what's the latest situation in the war? Well, you'll remember Gonzalo Lira, our dear friend, now departed, murdered by the Ukrainian regime of Volodymyr Zelensky, using our money, using our political, military, diplomatic cover and support who runs a terror regime inside his own country, who imprisons, exiles and murders anyone who stands against him, and who is from the 20th of May an illegitimate ex-president of the Ukraine. His term has run out. Of course, he's got the permission of Blinken to go on pretending to be the president on the principle that there's no one else, according to Blinken, that can challenge him, which is a very odd approach to take to elections that are supposedly involved in a war for democracy. You're not going to have an election in Ukraine because Blinken says Zelensky is the best president that you could have. Foreign interference in other people's uh, governmental, democratic affairs, anyone. Well, Zelensky may not be here for very much longer because the revolt that is gathering pace in the inner circles of power in Kiev are having to be handled in ever more remarkable and unusual ways. You get sent to London with a very large bag of money supposed to stuff your mouth with gold so that you say little or nothing. Or you are threatened, you are jailed, you are tortured, you are captured, disappeared, 
like many of the critics of the Ukrainian leader have already been. But it will not stave off the inevitable. This evening, a vast Russian army is but 20 kilometers and closing on the overwhelmingly Russian city of Kharkov, from which my dear friend Gonzalo Lira used to speak to us with some regularity and massive, massive audiences. Well, if Kharkov is stormed in the next hours, days or weeks, I hope that a suitable memorial will be placed in a prominent place to the brave man, Gonzalo Lira, murdered for telling the truth about the Zelensky regime. Only time then to talk about uh, the conversations we had in the Vatican on the subject of Gaza. Everybody in the Vatican is seized by the slaughter of the innocent that is going on. It is Herod-like. There is a magnificent painting inside the Vatican, which we uh, filmed, in which Herod is literally seen plunging his dagger into the neck of a newborn babe. Netanyahu is the King Herod uh, of the 21st century, is he not? What has this all been but a slaughter of the innocent? Has it not been a slaughter not seen since the Holocaust of the Second World War where children are being killed faster than they were murdered, massacred, genocided in the Nazi Holocaust of the late 1930s and 40s? Of course, the numbers don't compare. A million children were massacred in the Holocaust, but the rate of murder of children is higher. The children who were murdered by the Nazis in the Holocaust were murdered over a period of six years. These children in Gaza have been murdered over a period of six months. The rate of murder of children and women in Gaza by people who themselves went through a Holocaust. And imagine, imagine that having gone through a Holocaust somehow gives you a license to perpetrate a Holocaust on other people, other defenseless people, that you have conveniently anathematized, demonized, dehumanized, called human animals, called Amaleks, called a threat to humanity itself. Wasn't that interesting? Wasn't that interesting? So then uh, I did want to get into uh, a couple of other clips. Uh, you know, one of the things I was pointing out to a friend of mine is that, you know, the whole world is against this war that's taking place against the Palestinians in Gaza. And I keep showing these clips over and over again, but I want to emphasize where the world stands. And so the first uh, protest, uh, let's, let's watch that protest. I can't remember where it was at. I just kind of like fish around and I find these protests. They're, they're taking place all over the world. Israel is, and the United States are becoming completely isolated. Okay, this is not good for Israel. Everybody says, oh, you hate Israel. You're anti-Semitic. No, I'm not. I want Israel to survive. But to survive, they've, they've got to, you know, stop the... And he says, you can't call it a genocide. Well, let's call it the extermination of the Palestinians in Gaza. Whether they're going to push them out into the Sinai Desert, where they're going to freaking die from starvation and heat, or whether it's just bomb them to death and, and just continue to kill children at a rate that, that's unbelievable. Women, children. I can't believe Christians are all for this. What the hell is wrong with... And this is why, you know, in the United Nations, I mean, the vote in the United Nations was, you know, about 90% of the countries voted against Israel. The only two countries that voted for Israel were Britain. Well, Britain actually abstained, and the United States voted uh, against it. I mean... The whole world's lining up against us, Israel, 
Uh, our sanctions, and if we're talking about sanction in India, I mean, do you, do you understand the dollars down? The Chinese just sold off billions of dollars worth of treasuries. I mean, this whole damn Ponzi scheme that the United States engineered with the Federal Reserve back in 2013 is coming to an end. Let's watch that first protest now. Wasn't that interesting? Wasn't that interesting? So you think, okay, well, you know, what have the Democrats done here in the United States? Well, it's funny as hell because they took over the universities and they educated the children on, you know, a lot of liberal uh, lunatic stuff, you know, that, that a woman's not a woman and a man can change his gender <laughs> and he could suckle a baby with his tits. I mean, come on. I mean, all the stuff that the Democrats have been teaching, but they did. Uh, warp the kids' minds into thinking that, you know, that they made them sympathetic, let's just say, to the Palestinian cause. And uh, and now, what are the Democrats doing? Because of the Israeli lobby, because the Democrats are all about money. That's a, It's a mafia, okay? And, and the Israelis give them more money than the Palestinians ever could, you know? I mean, uh, that comes out of the Arab nations. And so now they're cracking down on the students. I mean, it's been horrible what they've done. They've, be, they've sent in the National Guard. They've sent in uh, tr uh, state troopers to beat the hell out of the students that are protesting in favor of Palestine. But it just doesn't stop. Let's watch a protest in New York. <laughs> Wasn't that interesting? So the, the protest, even here in the United States, even with all the heavy-handed... By the way, if you're a Muslim in the United States, why would you ever vote Democrat? Don't you see what they... They're authoritarians, man. They don't want you protest. They don't want you expressing free speech in any way, shape, or manner. I mean, look at the way conservatives were... were were censored. I mean, of course, I know if you're a liberal lunatic, you don't really care that the conservatives were censored on, on what used to be Twitter is now X, and all the platforms, uh, you know, basically funded and paid for by the Democrats, and the, especially when the Biden administration took over, and that's what the Twitter files were all about. I mean, and so I guess you got your head buried in the sand. Uh, oh my goodness gracious! But I did want to just briefly talk about critical thinking. 
and how you can be wrong and right at the same time. So I just want to give a couple examples of, of myself. So way back when COVID was coming in, I had Democrat friends. I don't have any anymore. I can tell you that. But and so I was telling everybody, you know, this is going to be major, man, when this thing comes in, because China, I was reading all the news reports about China being locked down. I'm just like you, man. I freaked out. I was I was putting the groceries out in the front yard because I knew that UV radiation would kill uh, the any virus that was on my food and stuff as I was buying it and bringing it home. Luckily, here in Florida, we remained pretty much free. I mean, we did a brief lockdown, but it, it, it pretty much ended fairly quickly. And uh, uh, which, 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 by the way, crazy. I mean, this is where critical thinking comes in. So here's a challenge for you. So I'm hiking a trail because you couldn't do anything back then. It wasn't, it wasn't any fun to play pickleball because they literally had you put hand sanitizer in your hands, put it on the pickleball before you could even serve it. And, and you know, it just, it was just ridiculous what people were doing. And, uh, and me, I mean, putting the groceries out in the front yard, but I look back on it and I think, God dang, I was a stupid son of a gun. <laughs> you know? But that's what I'm telling you is sometimes in life, we do allow the propaganda and we do allow the lies to enter into our lives. The important part is, is to recognize, you know, what, what happened to you. And of course, the mass psychosis about everybody had to get the vaccine. And now we're finding out that there's so many vaccine injuries and people that are suffering, thank God I didn't get the vaccine. You know, I mean, I, well, not vaccine. It's not even a vaccine. It's, it was an experimental mRNA uh, experiment, you know. And, and so they did it to, to millions of people. Oh, my God. But what I'm saying is, you know, you got to look back through life. I'll give you another example. Uh, and this has nothing to do with uh, uh, medical or anything. But I had a chance. I was buying into a community in Tennessee. That was where I planned to retire until my ex-wife got us to go to Florida. And thank God she did. I mean, it's, this is a great place. I love it here in Florida. But uh, we were going to move to this, this HOA community, gated community, just like I'm in now, another gated community. And uh, it was, it. but I had a chance to buy a lot for 63000 right on the lake. It was Lake Cherokee. But instead, I wanted privacy, and I, you know, because people that's a, it's public, right? So they could just moor their boats right in front of my house on my beach. I mean, if I owned the beach, I would have probably done it. But at the same, at, at that time, they could just come in and just, you know, sit on the beach in front of my house. I didn't want that. I wanted a place up in the woods. Well, that lot sold for two hundred and sixty thousand dollars that was on the lake. Instead, I bought a lot up in the woods. I uh, for fifty three thousand, and I ended up selling it for six thousand dollars. So we can all make mistakes. If I bought the lakefront property, which I if I had known anything about real estate, that would have been a much better buy. All right, so enough on critical thinking. But I just I just want you to think about things. You know, where were you wrong? Did you wear a mask the whole time during uh, COVID? You know. Uh, hell, even here in Florida, I, I was getting physical therapy uh, just a year ago, maybe about a year and a half ago. I can't remember. And they were still wearing masks. <laughs> the woman that owned the place was a liberal Democrat. She had all the employees. Of course, everybody had their mask down on their chin. Nobody was, you know, everybody was ignoring it. And, and I'm just like, I said, even the kids at school don't have masks on no more. What the fuck? What the freak is wrong with your damn owner, man? And so I, I went on to another physical therapy place. I wasn't going to... I, I never wore a mask to begin with. Even Fauci said, if you go go and look back through history, he said in the beginning, masks don't work. Then, of course, he changed his tune. I don't know why he did. I mean, I don't know what the point was. And then social distancing, and we all have to admit that was a mistake. Uh, I mean, just look back through history and just admit where you were wrong. That's all that I'm saying. You know, were you wrong to get the, the jab? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe so, right? Were you wrong to wear a mask? Maybe not. Maybe so. Were you wrong to keep your kids out of school? Maybe right. Maybe so. Were you wrong to shut down your small businesses and allow the government to take over your lives and lock you in your houses? Maybe right. Maybe so. All I'm saying is get some critical thinking. And I want you to look back and think, am I ever going to make these mistakes again in life? And I hope you won't. So let's get into a couple of uh, tweets here. Uh, not tweets. Uh, ex-posts. Excuse me. Uh, Elon. 
So uh, this is a, this is big surge. <laughs> I think I think this summarizes what I wanted to say about the uh, president going down in uh, Iran. Look, if Rasi R A I S I has survived for twelve hours on a stormy mountain in the heart of a wolf pack's territory after a fiery helicopter crash, he's made of nerve and steel, and Iran is going to win. He's either dead or he's one of the hardest dudes alive. So. One of the things that the media doesn't point out, I was wondering how when you've got three helicopters flying together and one of them goes down, you pretty much know the location. You can, you know, you're, you've got your longitude and latitude. I mean, I'm sure that those are, are I, I've never flown a helicopter, but I imagine that they're right there. They could have marked the exact location where the helicopter went down. So I can't believe they can't find it. But at the same time, it's snowy up there in the mountains. I understand. Man, I looked at it. It's foggy as hell. You can't see more than a, a foot in front of you. So that's why the search teams are having a hard time finding it. Uh, this was one. I mean, I you know, everybody says, oh, you're a Trump guy. You're a Trump guy. Well, guess what? Trump's been wrong about a lot of stuff. And this is Robert Barnes. I definitely uh, watch him on Rumble with uh, Viva Fry. Viva Fry on Rumble. And he says, easy solution for Trump is to call out Pfizer. Rather than keep defending the COVID vaccine, people act like he is powerless to take the simple step. If he can't do that, how's he going to take out the deep state? Good damn question. Trump, 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 you were wrong, man. Admit it. You shouldn't have locked down the United States. You messed up. Okay. Just admit you messed up. You were wrong about the, the, the vaccine that you, well, not a vaccine, the, the, the jab that you pushed out. Admit it, man. Come on. Give, give, it, give us a bone for the American people. All right, let's keep going. So Wall Street Silver. Florida and Alabama have banned lab-grown meat. I don't think a ban is needed. I think it's a product that would have failed in the market on its own. Nobody is seeking this type of artificial food product. So the point here is let the free market decide, man. DeSantis, DeSantis, I love you, man. You do a great job here in Florida. You don't need to ban fake meat. Let the market decide. Uh, is is it you know because it's made from stem cells? Uh, would people buy it? Well, the people probably liberal Democrats would buy it. Hopefully, it'll poison them and they'll all uh, you know have problems and not vote in the next election. <laughs> you know? And we can get Trump elected, you know. But I mean, you know, you don't need to ban it. Let let the free market decide. I don't. I don't like this type of legislation where you take it upon yourself to dictate what products people can and can't buy, even if it's a bad product. I certainly wouldn't buy any fake meat. Would you? I mean, you tell me. Uh, maybe leave a comment below. So uh, here we go. This is an article from Wall Street Silver. Pfizer says they're deeply sorry for violating five regulatory codes and illegally promoting their vaccine. Very interesting. Uh, UN troops to be deployed across the U.S. as the United States prepares for civil unrest, Operation Peacekeeper unveiled. In a groundbreaking move, the Pentagon has announced a partnership with the United Nations to deploy, I don't know if this is true, this is Josh Who, I don't know who the hell he is, Josh Who X, you can follow him on, on X, but this is what he's saying, to deploy UN troops across the United States in preparation for potential civil unrest. The decision marks a significant shift in the country's approach to managing domestic crisis and has sparked widespread debate among citizens and experts alike. The initiative dubbed Operation Peacekeeper aims to enhance the nation's ability to respond to large-scale civil disturbance by leveraging the expertise and resources of the United Nations. Uh, the UN troops hailing from various countries, will work alongside local law enforcement agencies. Boy, I, I bet in the Democrat states, most certainly. I'm not sure how that's going to work in the Republican states, but I, there are rhino Republicans that are in charge of some states. To ensure public uh, safety and maintain order during periods of unrest, the announcement comes amid growing concerns about the potential for civil unrest. Uh, so then it just goes on from there. So who knows? Maybe that's that's true. I. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Serbia, Alexander Fulin, about the assassination attempt on Prime Minister of Slovakia, FICO. We will learn the truth over time, but the incredible hatred and campaign that has been carried out for years against Mr. FICO in Slovakia 
and throughout Europe remains a fact. The essence of hatred against him is his political orientation. You know, in the West, other political beliefs are punished, punished in different ways. Sometimes sanctions are imposed against you, sometimes you are shot at. The outgoing Western world order clings by all means to its world domination. Today, they shot at FICO. Tomorrow, they are already planning to throw atomic bombs. American senators propose to bomb Palestine with atomic bombs. Wonderful right. Well, I agree with that. Uh, we already did a video on this. This is uh, Putin arriving in Beijing. Uh, I don't know if you watch, uh, watch yesterday's or two days ago video. Uh, he was a rock star, man. <laughs> it was a, there was a band, kids jumping up with pom bombs and everything else. Uh, this is the last day that I've got the boo dog, the uh, the old battle hag, the ex-wife, the uh, the divorcee uh, that that uh, wanted me to wear a mask in my own house and wanted me to get the jab 16 times. Uh, we got divorced, and uh, this is her dog. She's been over in Europe having a good time, but she's taking the dog back tomorrow. Peace out and stay free. Oh, and we got to watch some Russian hardware at work. Уровень 30 ноль. Осколочно фугасный. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna... Cut you down.